Hey, you guys, this is Shamika with Dear Shamika, and I have Keith Deer here with us. His topic is going to be overcoming circumstances. So we're going to do a little backstory about his life growing up um, without a father, uh, certain circumstances that he went through, and how he managed to become a successful barber throughout those circumstances. So Keith, can you give a little backstory about where you grew up, growing up without a father and how it impacted you as a young man? Well, first and foremost, you know, I grew up in, you know, off Holmes and Mill Branch in the Oakshire apartments. So, you know, and my father never was there. And, you know, I believe like that, that made me the person that I am today, you know? So I, I feel like, you know, as I have, I have a son. So I feel like I, I wouldn't want my son to just grow up without a father. And a father figure is very important nowadays. You know, it's just, it's always important. But like, like me, I feel some type of way by my dad and not being in my life. You understand what I'm saying? Like, and that, and that means a lot. Like, just for, you know, girls and boys, like when they, when they had a father in their life, it's different. You get a different type of love. You get a different type of vibe. You know what I'm saying? You know, you're going to always love your mama, but it ain't nothing like daddy. It ain't, it ain't nothing like daddy, you know. And just me just growing up, just without a father then, you know, my mom, she just, she had four, four boys. So she working one job. So she trying to put food in the house. She trying to, you know, buy us clothes. I don't even ask for no Jordans. You ain't getting no Jordans. So don't even ask for that. So, you know, uh, it just, it was hard, you know what I'm saying? It was hard coming up and mm -hmm. it was time. Like mama tell me, uh, I, yeah, I ain't going to be able to buy you no shoe this year. So, you know, it just, it just was hard. And that would make me hustle the way I hustle. That would make me move the way I move. Cause I dare to go back like that. I don't, and I don't want my son to grow up like that. You know what I'm saying? So that's why I provide and, and put myself in position, you know what I'm saying? To have a better outcome, you know what I'm saying? It just, just in life. Okay, so we, we kind of talked about, we know your father wasn't present. Did you ever meet your father or were there occasions where you did spend time with him? And if there were occasions did you, that you spent time with him, what did those days look like? Man, I can count on three fingers. I can, I can count on three fingers, maybe two. Like, yeah, we ain't so spend no time together. That might probably took me to McDonald's one time. Yeah, so we we never bonded, but I I see him, you know, I see him. But my brother, you know, what I'm saying my three older brother had a same daddy, so I feel like he more of a father than you know what I'm saying than my real daddy, you know. Mm -hmm. So I look at him like my daddy, you know. And plus my two older brothers too, though, because they raised they raised me, so I always looked up to them. So the thing that I like, my mother was lacking in my big brother and them always, you know what I'm saying? Like, look, cause they know it was hard. It was hard coming up. So it was time, like I'm wearing they clothes. You know what I'm saying? Cause mom like, Hey, I can't, you know, she was doing whatever she was doing her business, working two jobs. And it just, as you get older, you get wiser. You understand, like it's hard being a single parent when you got to pay bill, light bill. Okay. You got to put food. You can't get no, 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 no government assistance because guess what? you got a job. So guess what? You, you got to buy food. You know what I'm saying? It just, it's hard and you can't get the thing that you really want. You know what I'm saying? So it was just, I understand, I understand now. As I got older and wiser, back then I didn't understand. You know what I'm saying? But now as I got older and wiser, I understand. Like, it's, it's hard, especially for a single parent. It's hard. Mm -hmm. So you, you say you, you understand now, as a kid, how did that make you feel? when you like, If you could go back to kid, Keith, how did that make you feel? You I, I was a kid. I was torn. I was torn because there were things that I wanted, but you know, I just had to deal with it. I was, I was still with bless, you know, just still blessed. But I was torn, like, cause it, it was like things that I wanted that I couldn't get, you know. So I just had to deal with it and suck it up and and just, you know, and just go with the flow. You know what I'm saying? But as I got older, I, I understand. I, I understand. Mm -hmm. Most definitely, I, I understand. And I appreciate my mother for raising me, you know, she raising me and doing everything she can do. Mm -hmm. And I just, I, I appreciate her because it made me the man I am today. Okay. So we'll talk a little bit about, so I know that you've been incarcerated before. How long right. were you incarcerated and how did it change your perspective on life? 
Uh, I was locked up for like uh, nine nine years. Yeah, I was locked up for like nine years, and it How it made me. You? Huh? How old were you when you got initially got locked up? 20, 25. Young. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Twenty five. I'm thirty. I'm thirty six now. So, yeah, it was. It, you know, it made me. I. I learned patience, you know what I'm saying? I, I'm, I'm much more humble, I'm much more wiser, you know, and it's just, all your friends really ain't your friends, uh, so don't, like, nowadays, you, they're my home, but they no, they not, you know what I'm saying? When you're in certain situations, you might need somebody, or it, it go for family member too, you know, you might need somebody, and guess what? They're going to let you down, you know, and I try to, you know, I try to talk to, you know, younger kids, like, you're going in the wrong direction. You know, I've already been there. I'm, I'm telling where you're going. I know where you're going. And you ain't going to like the outcome. Because everybody is not, like, stable in the mind to even be put in that situation and be locked up in a small, confined spot for a very long time. Everybody mindset wouldn't be able to take it. So. How did you keep your sanity? Like, how did you, as, because 24, 25, that's a extremely young age. And to have you know, the pleasures of just being able to go in and out of door taken away from you at such a young age. Like, how did you stay mentally sane? Well, I was basically, I was just, you know, every day I was doing something like I was going to school in there. I was taking up like business class and I was also couldn't hurt in the barbershop or, you know, just getting up every day praying and, and you know, getting my day started. You know, I get up, watch the news and then I go, go outside, we play basketball. You know, work out. We would just, you know, you just can't just sit there and not do nothing. You know, you're gonna be miserable. You're gonna be just gonna be sad. And I don't want no sad people around me. You know, I know I don't, I don't, my spirit ain't like that. It, it don't matter the situation. You know, it was just a minor setback for a major mm -hmm. comeback. Come on so, now. Yeah. So that's all. You know, just keeping my head above the water, staying focused. Like people used to ask me, "Why are you taking a bid in the clinic? Because I got a bid to take her when I get out. You know, Come you know. Now. Yeah. So. That was, you know, that was my main focus. You know, I wasn't gonna let, I wasn't gonna let this dictate, you know, what I'm saying the outcome for me. Like, I know I'm getting out one day, but I'm not knowing what day. Right. So, yeah, and I just, I like I said, I stayed busy. I mm -hmm. stayed busy. Wow. So, and I, you know, I, I, I always, you know, get on the phone. I talk to a couple of people, and they always tell me like, you sound like you're not, you sound like you, you're not even in jail. It's just your spirit, your vibe. Like, I ain't gonna, like I said, I'm not gonna let it dictate, you know what I'm saying, my situation. I ain't gonna let it, you know, you know, it like hurt me. Like, I know I'm, I know I messed up. I know I'm in a confined spot, but hey, I'm still breathing. I still got out my arms. I'm thankful. But guess what? You know, I'm, I'll be home one day. And, on I just popped, and I just popped up. I just pulled up like a pamper. <laughs> you and all these phrases. <laughs> <I> just, <laughs> I just He's pulled a up. rapper, you guys. He's amazing. How do you stay so... Because it seems like you're just a positive person. And yeah. you came from... Like, we're from the struggle. You came from poverty. Right. You already named... You from the haven. You grew up without a father. You guys didn't have much. How do right. you stay so positive dealing with situations like this? Well, I stay positive just, like, on a daily basis. Like, I know I got to get up and make, a, make my day productive. I just can't sit. I just can't sit down and just not do nothing. Cause I, by you not, by you not doing nothing, you ain't gonna get nowhere. You don't get nothing done. You know, I, I, I like to stay motivated. I like to move. I like, I, I have things that I want in life. Come on, you ain't gonna, it just ain't gonna fall in your hand. Mm -mm. You know, you gotta get off your booty and get on your duty. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm just saying that. I, I'm being real with you. <laughs> I'm just, you I'm put just, up like a pamper and got on your duty. Oh my God, I can't. Yeah, hey, it's just, you know, <laughs> you got to do it. If you don't do it, who going to do Nobody it? Nobody will. But see, you. the cool thing about you is you have an entrepreneurial mindset. Where did this mindset come from? Like, who inspired you to be on your grind? Well, like I said, back when I was young, I used to watch my older brother cut her. And, you know, I used to watch him put $5, $7 in his pocket. I said, hey, I want to do that. I used to be clumped onto his leg. Like, I, I'm kind of watching him doing it. Then, you know, when I, as I was growing up, I see a couple, you know, the older guys, They, you know. So I want to do that, like, you know. Mm -hmm. 
And I just took off like NASA. Put it like that. <laughs> I need to come up with some catchphrases. <laughs> I'm not doing it right. <laughs> like, see, right, it got to be. Stuff, hey, <laughs> see, it got to be in you, not on you. you oh, oh, okay. It's like, <laughs> Look, somebody on one of my things they said that's that P talk. I don't know what that means, but <laughs> that P talk. <laughs> he, said, he said it's in you not he said that as well, but I'm gonna write me some stuff down. And I, I guess it's not in me. <laughs> so you gonna study the guy. Yeah, I'm I'm gonna study the guy. I know it's to be sold, not told, but I'm gonna okay. learn one of these okay. days. Uh, okay. how is fatherhood? How is fatherhood? Oh man, that's the best feeling in the world. <laughs> That's the best feeling in the world, I promise you. Like, I wouldn't trade that for nothing in the world. Like, the my, he, if, 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 when I come in the house and he sleep, I'm waking him up. Yeah, get up. Yeah. Yeah, I got, you know, I've been, I've been working all day, so get up. I won't talk to you because he wake me up at three o'clock in the morning. <laughs> you waking the up. baby up. Yeah, I'm waking the baby up. I got to get up and go to school. I got to get up and go to work. Uh uh. When I get up, you sleep. Yeah, get up. Oh, you know, when I'm sleep, you want to wake me up. Nah, we ain't going to. We ain't gonna play them guys. Y'all waking you know? each other up. Yeah, we waking each other up. But that, oh. but like, like I don't, under, I don't understand like how men can have kids and not, you know, what I'm saying, be there. Like, I don't, I don't understand that. But I never understand that because I'm not that type of person. So that's mm -hmm. something. That's another thing. Like, when you don't understand something, you have to just like come in mind and just think about like, because your mindset is too different. Y'all two yeah. different people. So you would never put yourself in a situation like that. So, mm -hmm. yeah. I was actually talking to Robert Hill about being a leader. Um, you seem like a leader. So when I think of leaders, I think of people that have their own mind. Right. How do you stay right. that way? Because a lot of people, what I see is a lot of people will change their mind based upon who they're talking to. So like if I'm talking to you and I feel you're a leader, I'm going to kind of change my conversation because I'm talking to you. Then when I get to Robin, I'm going to change my conversation. How do you stay yourself in changing situations? Just be real. That's it. Just just be real. Don't sugarcoat nothing. Uh -huh. Get to it straight up and down. All around the board like Monopoly. You know, you just ain't going to pass going to get to In me because, boy, you be having them prices. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's just, you know, just be real like. Cause you know sometimes you know some people tend to act like they you know so real the one who well right. but yeah but the whole time they be fake so that you know just you just be you be you you know what I'm saying and just just be you just just be real like mm -hmm. you can respect being real all day long like be honest be real like you know it, it ain't it ain't hard mm -hmm. you know some people make it hard it ain't, what, it ain't hard what can we do because um there are a lot of kids who grow up with out fathers within our communities. How can we hold the people accountable that aren't doing what they need to do as parents from from a in a loving way? Well, now what can we do about your it? Your friend is not being a, a stand up parent. Do you say something or do you let it go? No, no, yeah, I'm saying something. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm saying something. Like mm -hmm. all my friends, all my homeboys, yeah, they take care of their kids. Cause mm -hmm. we know we just we weren't brought up like that. You know what I'm saying? But okay, if, if it's a problem in something and I see you ain't doing something, I'm gonna pull this coattail. Mm -hmm. And I expect them to do the same thing for me. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah, yeah, pull it, pull that coattail, talk to them. If something ain't going, you know, communication. Uh, you know, you know, them kids need that love and that guidance. You know, don't I don't like seeing kids being misguided and not that don't have that father figure in their life. It ain't cool. I ain't gonna lie to you. It ain't cool. Mm -hmm. I wish my dad was in my life, you know. It just but but that that would make me the man. Like I said, that would make me the man I am today. I wouldn't do my son like that. I don't care. I don't care if I didn't have no kids and, and you know the woman that I'm dealing with, she had kids. Hey, they mine too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm a I'm gonna be there. The dad I ain't got to do nothing. I'm gonna do it. Mm -hmm. You know, it just you know. It, I'm just, I'm just like that. I'm like that. I ain't gonna lie so I to gotta, you. I, got, I also, so we shared a couple of social media posts that are pretty popular. So there was this post that said this guy was dating this young lady. If you're dating someone, are you obligated to bring their kids food if you go over their house? Or do well, you feel, well, yeah. if you bring your food for the lady, are you obligated to do it for the kids you, as well? Or you, is it under? You're not obligated, but at the same time, 
you know, if you bring us something, bring everybody something. Don't be petty and selfish. You know, mm -hmm. yeah, don't be petty and selfish. Bring us, bring, bring us something. The kids gonna be hungry. I ain't no way you gonna eat. You know what I'm saying? She gonna be eating in front of the kids. Mm -hmm. You know, if anybody do what she need to be saying, bring my kids something. I'm cool. <laughs> right. yeah, don't bring me, you know, don't bring me nothing. Bring the kids something. So, you know, but I bring everybody something, you know, because I wouldn't want nobody to feel left out. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. And a, a lot of people don't know this about me. Like, I kind of talked to Keith off camera about this, but I actually grew up with an incarcerated parent. So, right, right. Pretty much my whole life, my dad was, he knew my dad, but my right. dad was pretty much in and out of the system. And sadly, one of the things about the system is sometimes when people get in, it's hard to get out. Right, and some right. people weaponize the fact that people have been in the system. So once you get in, then you get certain people targeted. Not saying all police officers do this, right? But certain people will target you because you're in the system, and then yep. you keep going back. And right. so with a child who doesn't know, you know what's going on, it's like, where's my dad? Right. And so that's why, like, I push, push, push for fathers to be in their kids' lives because right. a lot of people don't know, but I grew up, you know, I had a stepfather, but it's not, right. you know, it wasn't my father. It ain't nothing like your daddy. Yeah. Ain't like your daddy. Did it make you feel like it's something wrong with me? Like, yeah, as a I, kid, you, you try to, like, you know what I mean? Like, you need yeah. that guidance from, from a, a mother is great, but it's certain things that a child will get. Like he said, he wake up the baby and they having conversations. Oh uh, yeah, I'm waking them up. Get up. Doing the mohawk. I saw the the hairstyle. Uh, yeah, you did on your son. <laughs> you know, it's Elvis week. You know. Oh goodness. It How's your baby week. now? Uh, he like a month. He a, well, he a, well, a month and a half now. He's so precious. Yep. I love my little Pookie Wookie. <laughs> How many more are you having? Is this it for you, or are you having more? I probably have about eight more. No, I'm just playing. Let me. I'm just playing. I don't know. You don't know about folks. No, nah, I'm just playing. I, I probably had like one more, you know, maybe one or two more. For them to grow not, up. Not now. right now, though. Not right now, but, you know, I probably have one, two more, though. I love kids. Like when I was, like my little nieces and them, you know, before I had kids, you know, my little nieces and them, I used to just always just, I love kids. Oh. I spoil them. Yeah, I love kids. And like, because I was a kid before and I know how they're feeling it. Like I said, you know, <laughs> It was stuff that I wanted that I couldn't get. So I know how it is as a kid, you know. So, that, you know, that's why, that's why I do the things that I do, though. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Like my little nieces and nephew, they'll tell you. I love my uncle. They tell me I'm the best uncle in the world. Yeah. And how so do you feel when they say that? Oh, loving the death. Every, look, every every time I had a visit, they were kicking the door in. Like when I when I used to have a visit, they will be about, I probably had like about eight, eight people in there with me. When I go visit, like my family, I, I, my little nieces, they always, my nieces and nephew, they always come. Yep, they always come. It just, you know, it, it feel good. And like I said, like, if I don't do it, who going to do it? You know, I'm a, you know, I'm an uncle. Then I be, you know, to helping my brothers them out, you know, like, they'll be like, I just call them and be like, hey, what the kids doing? Are they in there? Oh, tell them to put some clothes on. We're going to go to CC Pizza. Oh, he, before, listen, before the, before I even get out the phone, he, hey, your uncle finna come get you. He hanging the phone up. Hurry up, put your clothes on. Okay. <laughs> yeah. It's a so, village thing. You give you giving him a break. He like, yeah, I'm giving him, him. Yeah, I'm giving him a break. Him and, and his wife. I'm love them, so they excited because Uncle Keith. What they call? What the kids call you? Man, Uncle Trap, Uncle Court. Oh, 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 Trap Nasty. I forgot. <laughs> oh, that's me. <laughs> hey, that's me. <laughs> yeah. Trap nasty in the building, you guys. I am in the well, building. Uncle Most Uncle definitely. Trap. That's cool. You know, but you know, they counted me out, but I counted myself in. You said what? I said they counted me out, but I counted myself in. Who counted you out? People? Yeah, you know how it be. You know how it be. You and I think I also it's because you're confident within yourself. People, the saddest thing about, and I love the city of Memphis, but people don't like when people are confident within themselves. It's right. almost like some people see you like a threat because it's like, why are you feeling yourself so much? They right. want you to be down bad and down and out and sad right. and, and miserable, 
But when you're so happy, it's like, why are you so happy? Right. And when we need be... to hang around people to empower ourselves. Most people definitely. seems like you're empowering people. Most, de You know, that's the philosophy of being a great achiever in life. Empowerment, dedication, ambition, motivation. You know, it's just, hey, man, if you ain't doing nothing, then you need to move out of the way. You need to get off your booty once again and get on your duty. Because everybody out here got has, has a purpose. You know, we get, okay, you know, like when we were kids and we were just running around playing, get all this over with. All the playing and all this over with. I ain't no time to be playing now. You know, you're getting older. You're getting older, so you got to put yourself in position. You're trying to have, you know, you're trying to have things and leave generational, you know what I'm saying, wealth behind. You know, you you know, because, you know, majority of the black, you know what I'm saying, we don't we don't have it. So yeah. I'm trying to break the cycle. I'm trying, me personally, I'm trying to break the cycle in my family. I'm, I'm going to be the cycle breaker. Come on now. So, yeah, that, that's what I'm on. That's yeah, no different. We don't have to stay in our circumstances. Yeah. We don't. Like when I graduated from, me for instance, when I graduated from college, I was a warehouse worker because right. I didn't know how to navigate. And then ended up getting a director's position. So, and I'm, we're from the same neighborhood. So right. I'm from right. White Haven also. So you do not have to be a victim of, I don't know who this is for because somebody is watching this and you don't know who you're inspiring, Keith, but. You don't have to be a victim of your circumstance. Show up. Most you know different. You can go to jail and bounce back. Don't hey, allow. Listen. I got clients. I help people find jobs. I got clients who have been incarcerated who are making money. So right. you do not have to be a victim. Don't allow what happened in your past. The past is gone. Right. You got this thing. Right. This man are living with. Like this man in school, working, got a, a child. Doing amazing. So right. this is a testament that it can be done. And he from Both poverty different. and he grew up without a father. Right. But you didn't so one time cry about it or make an excuse about I don't know. Most why different. he's you... in the position he why he was or who didn't do this and who didn't yep. pay that. Yeah. It's just like you just have to you just have to use your 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 your, your you know what I'm saying? Like when you when you mess up, you just gotta use it as a like a mistake as a stepping stone. That's all. Just use that as a stepping stone. Like, okay, I know I missed up. It's just like you say, hey, it's a pothole down the street. Don't drive down there. Now, you keep going down that same street, you're going to end up in the same pothole. Right. You know? Yeah, yeah try to try to turn your steering wheel a little to the left a little bit so you can merge it. Mm. You know, it's just, you know, you just got to, and, and most definitely, like, don't just be, like, stuck with one idea. Like, try to multitask. Like, if you're doing this, okay, just don't be stuck doing it. Okay. Open up your mindset. And, okay. Let's see what this is doing. Do this, you know, so you can have multiple types, different types of income coming in, you know, and, you know, and, and, and set everything. If you have kids, set everything up for your kids so they can be, you know, they can, they don't, they don't have to go through the things you went through. See, that's, that's what, that's what I'm doing. I don't want my kids to go do what I'm doing, what I done went through. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to show them. No, I'm, listen, listen. Listen, when my son get old, when he get a little older, hey, listen, don't if if your mama tell you no, don't come and ask me. You know, <laughs> hey, if I say no, don't go ask your mama. You know, because kids with ten to you know, they're oh, trying. Kids are very. Uh, I used to work at youth villages with kids with behavior issues, and they slick. They know how to I play the game, and they yes, play what? you against each other. And that's why when I see people arguing. You know, even on here, it's like you don't even know a kid can play you against each other and get what they want. My promise they will. Cause I hey, get what we were kids once before, so we know. Like you know, like your mom used to tell you, "I know what." Hey, listen, you were doing that. I'm like, "Nah, I wasn't doing that." But now, as you get older and you become a parent, you know your child. <laughs> you gonna know, just like your mom, just like your mom and dad. You know they know you, mm. so you can't tell them no anything. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, we got to get it together, y'all. It's all about, I want to see people grow and do better. Like, man, right. we're too old, like he said, to be comfortable being in right. the same situation in the same spot. And I want to see people thrive. I want to see people struggling and sad and depressed all the time. Right. Oh, yeah. Oh, I, don't want no, I don't want no sad and depressed people around me. Come on now. Yeah, uh-uh. You got to go that way. You too sad. You depressed. What's wrong with you? Oh, man. Hey, look. That's that victim, keep that's that victim mentality. A lot of people, it's like 
some people are really going through, but some people are permanent victims. They just thrive off sympathy. But with all the stuff Keith just said he went through and he's smiling. Every day. I'm talking about every day. Like, I don't wake up with no, you know what I'm saying, like, with my problems and, you know what I'm saying, everybody had problems, but, you know, everybody deal with problems different. Mm -hmm. But, you know, I'm going to smile through my problem. You can't get what they my problem. There ain't nobody else's problem. I ain't going to come around you uh, with my problem that you ain't saying, no, nah, you know, mm -hmm. nah, I'm going to deal with my own problem, you know. I'm going to uplift, you know what I'm saying? I'm going to uplift myself. I don't need nobody to uplift me. I'm going to uplift myself. Hey, hey, man, it's not about you tripping. You, you got a spirit like my daddy had. That's why I'm like, ah, man. Yeah. Funny. Most, most definitely. <laughs> most definitely. Ah, man, you, you got to be that type of person because some people have the power to get in a room and transform the room. I right. know I met this lady a few years ago. She was a nurse. She said, you change the atmosphere. Don't allow it to change you. Right. Meaning, regardless of who you're around or your circumstance, you have the power to change it. Don't let it change you as a person. And a lot of us let life and people change us. Be true to who you are and stay positive. It's not like if you stay positive, things will change for the better. You got anything left to say, Keep? We're about to wrap this thing on up. Did he freeze? Oh, man. We'll give it a couple of seconds to try to see if he unfreezes or comes back in. Oh, man. Keep froze. Yeah, but I was about... I was about to end the live anyway, but we'll see you guys later. Thank you guys for tuning in. I think Keith, Keith grows. So I'm going to drop off.